Hi there. If you're a new viewer, welcome to my channel. And if you're returning, welcome back. Today, I'm going to be tackling one of the easy to medium tasks in Code Signal. So stay tuned. On the left hand side of my screen, you can see the Code Signal platform I'm going to be tackling the problem from. And on the right hand side, I've got my Jupyter Lab that helps me to explain the problem to you. We're tackling the matrix element sum. If you haven't seen my video on matrices in Python, the link is up the top right. But this task is a funny one. You've been given a matrix that I'm going to copy and paste into my Jupyter notebook. And this matrix, you can think of it as a haunted house or the number of rooms in a haunted house. And the task is asking us if a house has got a value of zero, ignore it. And if a house is sitting under another house with the value of zero, ignore it. So for example, this one, ignore this one, add this one also add this one also add this one ignore this one ignore this one add ignore ignore because it is sitting under a zero house this one ignore ignore and ignore because they are under values of zero so how are we going to tackle this let me start with running over different indices of a matrix. So how do I write a for loop that goes over rows or goes over columns? For this task, I will write columns first, then rows. You might ask, why do you write on columns first? Well, the task tells me if something sits under a value zero, do not consider it. So I have to look in a columnar way first than in the rows inside a column. So that's pretty easy, right? Now, let me write my first loop because I need two loops, one for columns, one for rows. I will write for columns first. For call in range of matrix on the first row, quickly, let me show you. The length of the matrix itself is three. So you can see that when we calculate the length of a matrix, it looks from top to bottom. So one, two, and three. The columns are defined inside the row. So if I show you the length of the first row is actually four because one, two, three, and four. Let's just go ahead and delete that. So that's my column iterator. I need another iterator for the row. So for row in range of matrix, I can show you if I print the matrix on the row and on the column. I forgot to put the length function on both of them. Let me quickly put the length function there. You will see that I am running 0, 0, 2, which is my first column, then 1, 5, 0, which is the second column, 1, 0, 3, and 2, 0, 3. So I've got the four loops. What am I testing? There are two tests. One, is the value itself 0? Or is the value sitting under another zero? Then I just need to ignore it. Otherwise, I will keep counting. Do I have a container for keeping counting? I don't remember having made a container to remember how many I have counted before. Let me make a container before. So let's just call it container. And our container is zero in the beginning. And as we see new values, we will add it to the container. Let me get rid of that print. Condition number one. If matrix value sitting on that row and on that column equals zero, break, because I don't want zero. I don't want to count it. Condition number two, if we are in row greater than zero, so if you're not in row number zero, we are in row number one, number two, number three, and the value for the previous row in the same column, so for example, I want to see this one is not zero, right? I want to see was there a zero sitting up the top? Up the top of this one is one row less, but the same column. So I'm looking on the top row, but in the same column. That's what I'm doing right there. So if there is zero there as well, break again. But if none of those conditions meet, then you can start adding it to the container. So container equals container plus the value on that row and on that column. So I think this should work for this matrix. Let's run it again, and I should be getting number nine. So if I print the container, you will see that the answer is nine. So I've got it right. All I need to do now is to take that and put it into my solution. 
let me just expand it here, put this into all here. I need to move all of them one indentation to the front and I need to add a return here. So return container. Okay, moving my face to the side. If I run the test, let's see if it answers correctly. So 10 out of 10 was correct. Before I submit this, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. I spend a lot of time preparing these videos, so I really appreciate when you subscribe and ask me questions in the comments area. Let's submit this code. Hopefully it runs and it says correct. All those tests run successfully, so good luck and ask me your questions in the comments area.